Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. I have another video on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus for you today. Now, if you remember from my original review of this device, I wasn't completely satisfied with the face buttons on it. The original Retroid Pocket 3 device that came out a few months ago had some dome style switches for the face buttons. What that means is that these buttons had a soft clickiness to them, a lot like on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons as well as the PS Vita. Additionally, the D-pad on the Retroid Pocket 3 had the exact same dome style switches as well. And so the end result for this device is that we had some really nice matching D-pad and face button feel. Now when it comes to retro gaming, the standard for face buttons usually is not dome switches. Typically it is something that they call a rubber membrane connection. And this type of setup is standard in a lot of other handheld devices, so the original Nintendo controllers for example, and even something more modern like the PlayStation controllers have a very similar setup. And so when Retroid was making the 3 Plus, a lot of people requested to have rubber membrane connections instead. And so naturally, the company listened to its customers, and so in the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, it does come with rubber membrane connection face buttons. And honestly, that's all fine and dandy. In fact, these are very good buttons. The minor issue I had here is that the D-pad remained a dome switch connection. And to me, it felt a little bit like a mismatch. We have this soft clickiness D-pad and then these face buttons that are a little mushy. Again, I'm not saying that's a bad setup, but I preferred it on the Retroid Pocket 3 where they were both matching with dome switches. And so in this video here, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to install the original dome switches from the Retroid Pocket 3 onto the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Now to do this mod, I'm actually going to cannibalize one of my Retroid Pocket 3s and switch them over. But after putting in a request with Retroid, they've actually started selling these directly on their website and they're only five bucks. And so if you do want to make the switch, you do not have to cannibalize a different device. You just have to pay that extra five dollars when checking out. Either way, this is a very simple mod. And so let me walk you through that process right here. And so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, to start, naturally, we're going to tear down the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. The four outer screws here are Torx T5 screws, so you will need a special screwdriver set, and I'll leave a link to my favorite kit in the video description below. Once you have the screws removed, you're going to want to take a guitar pick and put it behind the shoulder buttons. Once you have that slid in, you're going to want to twist the guitar pick, which is going to pop some of the clips right here on the top. From there, you can just run the guitar clip around the rest of the edges of the case, and it should pop right out. Next, we're going to remove this black metal sheet, which functions as a heatsink. And these four outer screws are using a Phillips head instead of Torx. Once you have that removed, you can also remove the battery cable right here if you'd like. I'm just going to leave mine in right now. Next, I recommend removing this analog stick here on the left so it's not in the way. For this, you're going to want to unattach the ribbon cable and then unscrew the Joy-Cons right here. And like with the heatsink, these are going to be using Phillips head screws. In addition to the joystick itself, there's a little enclosure that you're going to want to remove as well. Now during this part, I forgot to film me unscrewing the PCB, but there's just three screws here holding this leftmost PCB in place. And again, they're Phillips head screws, very easy to remove. Additionally, there is a ribbon connection here on the right of the PCB. You'll want to unlatch that and pull that free as well. From there, I recommend using your guitar pick to kind of wedge around the PCB and then pull it out of place. And here's what the PCB looks like. As you can see with the rubber membrane connection, it's just a very flat surface. By contrast, here is the dome switch PCB. As you can see, it has these little raised bumps right here, and if you push down on them, they will actually go down. These are the micro switches that will register as a button press, which feel nice and precise when you're using them. Now the rubber connector for dome switch buttons is a little bit different than the other ones, and so this is what they look like here. The rubber here is going to be very thin, and the buttons are actually going to be attached to the membrane. Now if you do end up purchasing some replacement buttons, I would make note here that there are only four colors available. In particular, the rainbow buttons are not listed right here. But because I want to use my original rainbow buttons here with the console, I'll show you how to do that here in the video. Either way, you've got lots of choices. You can either just use the rubber membranes as they are right now, or you can use your own buttons that originally came with it. So now let's actually get down to business. First things first, we're going to remove this original rubber membrane connection from the 3 Plus. As you can see, it is quite a bit thicker than the other. In addition, the buttons are not going to be attached to the membrane, so you're just going to want to remove those one at a time. Now like I mentioned, you have a couple different options. So for example, if you like the dome switch buttons that you bought, you can just go ahead and place them directly into the device and you're done. And so for example, with the SNES buttons that I have right here, I could put them in my clear blue case. And the purple does look kind of neat here, but I do prefer the rainbow buttons instead. And so we are not going to use those buttons in this case. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my original buttons, but with the dome switch rubber membrane. 
Now, unfortunately, there's no really clean or glamorous way to do this. You basically just have to rip those buttons off the membrane. Now, as you do that, I recommend being very careful and making sure that you don't rip the membrane itself. Instead, when you pull it free, try to pull it free as close to the button as possible. It's going to feel a little bit destructive as you do this because you are going to be ripping it free, but as long as you're careful with it and you rip it near the button side and not on the membrane, you should be just fine. And so this is what the membrane is going to look like after you've ripped out the buttons. Now installing everything is actually fairly easy. All you have to do is just place your buttons in the correct place. And thankfully each of these buttons have some little pieces of plastic on each end so that you can only place them in one certain way. And so all you really need to do here is just kind of feel around and make sure that you've placed them correctly and you should be good to go. Now once you have that done, you're just going to want to reapply the dome switch rubber membrane. When you're doing this, make sure that the rip part is facing the buttons and not facing you. And there's going to be two small plastic posts that'll help you kind of guide the rubber membrane into the correct position. And that's really about it. We've actually installed the buttons correctly at this point. Now this part can be a little bit tricky because you want to make sure that all of those function buttons on the PCB are lined up correctly. So for example, the start and select buttons on the top and the shoulder buttons here on the left, as well as the home button on the far left, all these need to be placed in such a way that you can press down the buttons no problem. And for this, I just suggest taking your time, making sure you get it in a good angle, and then just kind of press it into place. As long as you're careful during this step, I don't think you can really damage the board or the buttons. And I would definitely recommend using something like your guitar pick to kind of ease it into place. The best way to test that everything is working is to just kind of push on the buttons and make sure that they all click nicely. Now I found that getting the ribbon cable attached is kind of tricky this way. And so to make things even easier, I would actually recommend removing the battery right here to have more access. To do this, I would recommend going from the top. As you can see right here, I'm trying it from the left side and I actually dented a little bit of the battery and you definitely don't want to do that. Instead, I would recommend going from the top and using a flat of the surface of the guitar pick as you can. It's just using a piece of double-sided tape here to hold it into place. And so once you have it free here, you'll find that it's even easier to add the PCB, but then also you can attach the ribbon cable at the same time. And so it's really up to you. There's no wrong way to really do this, but if you want the easiest method possible, then I would say yes, remove the battery. That way you can get the PCB in very easily, and you can also attach that ribbon pretty easily as well. Either way, just take your time and kind of coax everything into place. To attach the ribbon, all you have to really do is just push it into that one opening and then latch it into place. After that, we just really need to reassemble. So let's go ahead and screw in those three PCB screws right here. Again, these are Phillips head screws. And then I would do one last test to make sure your start and select and shoulder buttons are working fine. From there, screw in those two joystick screws and then attach the ribbon cable for the joystick as well. Like with all ribbon cables, make sure that you're very careful here that you don't tear anything. And we're basically done with the installation. So I'm going to rub off my fingerprints from the heat sink. I'm going to apply that as well. And then we're going to add the back case and then screw it all together. And we are now ready to go. Now to test this, we're going to use the gamepad tester app and we'll just go into the gamepad section here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just testing all the buttons to make sure they work properly. And yeah, everything's working great. Not only that, we now have those nice dome micro switch buttons. This means we have a soft clickiness texture and the travel here is pretty light as well. And so yeah, I would say this is an improvement over the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Again, I'm partial to those dome switches, but yeah, I'm really happy with these end results. Now, if you're like me and you cannibalize the Retroid Pocket 3 in order to make this happen, or if you ripped off your buttons from the dome switch rubber membrane, let me show you how to actually insert those into a different device. The big difference here is that there's a little piece of plastic that's sticking out from the bottom of the button. And so all you really have to do right here is take a file and then just kind of rub the bottom of that button against the file. This will scrape off that extra plastic so that everything is flush and flat. And it really only takes about five or 10 passes with the file to get everything even. After that, it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll add the buttons, then the new rubber membrane connection, and then put it all back together. And so in the end, here we are with my new Retroid Pocket 3 Plus that has dome switch connections for the face buttons instead of the rubber membranes. And honestly, it's a very minor upgrade, but I'm really enjoying the difference here. Part of this might be that I got very used to the Retroid Pocket 3 and how it was set up, but I am really happy to have that nice matching feel between the D-pad and the face buttons here. And so at the end of the day, is this a necessary upgrade to the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus? I would say no. If you like the feel of the conductive rubber membranes on the stock Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, then maybe it's not worth the upgrade. But if you like that soft clicky feel like on the PS Vita or a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con or on the original Retroid Pocket 3, then this might be worth doing. So personally, I'm very happy with this upgrade, but I can totally see why not everyone's going to want to do it. 
Either way, if you are interested, I hope that this video was helpful for you. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you team conductive rubber membrane or are you team dome micro switch? I'm kind of interested to see how this all plays out. Either way, thanks for watching the video and be sure to like and subscribe if you found it helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.